This time around is the turn of the all new features in Azure AD Conditional Access. What's new? What's cool? And more importantly, what can it do for you? Stick around. Hi there fellow YouTubers, Andy Malone, a Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. Welcome back to the channel, uh, I really appreciate it. This time I thought we'd take a look at some of the cool new features that are in conditional access and it's been going through one or two few changes and there's some very cool preview features in there that will make a huge difference to you. And it also introduces attribute based authentication. So how it works and what it does, well, I think the best thing we can do is have a look at a demo. Now, if you've not subscribed, of course, please go ahead, click on the subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on anything future. Okay, and as always, I love your questions, uh, comments, and feedback. So please go ahead and drop those comments down below. So without any further ado, let's jump in with the demo and have a look. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the, some of the new features in Azure AD Conditional Access. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to do a full demo on Azure AD Conditional Access, uh, and I will then add on some of the new features. So I'm heading to the security node here, and the first thing I'm going to do is just a quick reminder about identity protection. So identity protection has two core policies, a user risk, and a sign-in risk policy. And this is great for placing your really risky users into a bucket. So essentially, I'm just placing these guys into a bucket. I'm, I'm assigning them as a high-risk user. I can then say if there are any issues with the account, I can either block or allow access and then require a password change. Um, the sign-in risk policy is great for users, again, who are dialing in, um, or dialing in, remote, nobody dials in anymore, <laughs> except back in the 1990s. Um, you can go into sign-ins, again, I place them as high risk, and in this case, because they're signing in remotely, I've required multi-factor authentication from these users. So I've just gone ahead and set that up. Now on its own, sometimes identity protection can seem a little bit kind of weird, um, but when it's combined with the likes of conditional access, then it's really good. Okay, so looking at just a couple of new features, um, we have a, a feature here called continuous access evaluation. And what this does, it monitors for anything um, I can enable the preview and you can choose a specific group of users. And what it's doing is it's constantly monitoring those users uh, for any kind of changes, such as a client IP address change or um, any kind of unusual behavior. Immediately, it will disconnect the user um, and lock that user out. This is a really cool feature. Okay. Going into conditional access, I want to, uh, first of all, just prepare conditional access. So some of the things that you might want to do in advance, you might want to create a terms and conditions. So you might have an acceptable usage policy, for example, and you want your users to be able to accept that. The other thing that you might have is you might want users to come in over, over your VPN and you can actually create your own digital certificate, what I've done here, um, and then once you've done that, you can download that on the various users' devices and use that as part of authentication. Very nice. Um, so I'm going to go up to, oh, the other thing is named locations. Um, used to be known as trusted locations. So, for example, I can, you can either add in IP address ranges, um, MFA trusted IP address ranges, multi-factor authentication, or a country. So you can see in this case, I've set up the Netherlands and Norway as my trusted areas. So once I've done that, I can then go up to policies 
and in my policies we've got a few new features so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new policy here and I'm gonna call this my um, I'll call this my IT uh, desktop or I'll just call it my IT access CA policy okay and I'm going to specify which users and groups. So essentially, and I've said this before, uh, conditional access looks for signals. So based on these signals, um, it then determines whether they meet these certain conditions. If it does, we then apply an access control. And the access control can either grant or deny, and you can then determine how that user is going to authenticate. You can also control the session as well. Now, just to remind you that you do not need to have a managed device. So you can still set um, conditional access policies for unmanaged devices, including guest access and so on. So you can see I can create a conditional access policy for all guests and external users. I can do one for directory roles, so administrators, for example, and I can also do them for our users and groups. So in this demo, I'm going to choose my users and groups, and I'm going to say um, I'm going to choose Oslo, and I'm going to bring in my Oslo sales team. So this is my conditional access policy for my Oslo sales team. So I'm saying here, if my Oslo sales team are using these apps, and this is where things start to change. So you can either set rules based on a particular app, on a user's actions, or something called authentication context, which is currently in preview. Now, authentication context really looks at the privacy within the data privacy, so how sensitive is the data what's the context that the user is wanting to use that data for all right for the purpose of this demo I'm going to just choose cloud app and am I interested in all cloud apps or just specific apps again for the purpose of this demo I'll choose all cloud apps so basically any members of the sales group using any cloud apps they need to meet these conditions so, aha, look at that. That is that identity management here. So I can say, yes, I want to configure for both high and medium access. And I want to set up a sign-in risk. Yes, again, high and medium. Okay. Um, now, I can say, um, are they using a particular device? So this time you can include all these devices or you can exclude certain devices. So I'm going to click on configure and I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to choose Android and iPhone devices here. All right. Um, I'm going to click on done. And so if the user's using these devices and I'm going to say locations, but this time, instead of including a location, I'm going to exclude all trusted locations. So what this policy is going to do, I'm going to enforce MFA for all cloud apps, except where my users are coming in from trusted locations. So now we choose the client apps and what kind of client apps? Are they browser-based apps? Are they mobile apps? And do I want to exclude any kind of apps? So, for example, legacy authentication clients don't support multi-factor authentication. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those because that's a massive security hole, by the way. Uh, once you've done that, you can also bring in the device state. So I can say, yeah, I want to include or exclude any domain joined or hybrid joined devices in my organization all right and this is brand new this rocks by the way um, this is filters for devices uh, check this out 
this is really powerful. So I'm going to say yes. Do you want to include the filtered devices in the policy? Or you can exclude them. So I'm going to say include them. And look at this. I can go in here and you can filter by a specific ID, um, the owner, ownership, whether the device is compliant. But look, I could say I want to ban Huawei, uh, IFA or phones. I want to ban Samsung phones or I want to allow HP laptops. Look at that. That's really granular. OK, and you can even do it by model or operating system. So I could say only allow Windows uh, 10. So equals Windows 10 or later than a particular version. Do you understand? This is such a cool feature. The fact that you can now include or exclude and it's extremely granular. So you can then do and or. So you could say a, a particular device and an operating system or this operating system or this particular version. So this is absolutely amazing. This is attribute based authentication. And this is a is a sign of things to come, in my opinion. All right. So um, as I said, you can uh, bring in those filters if you want to. All right. Um, OK, so once you've done that, that they are the conditions. So now you can say, all right, uh, are you going to allow access or deny access? Well, I'm going to grant access. But in this case, I want to require multi-factor authentication. And you can also choose, um, do you require that, that the device is hybrid? Is the app that the user is using, is it on a list of approved apps, for example? Um, does it require an app protection policy? So again, you could set up a, a protection policy which specifies, hey, look, that's fine. They're allowed to use the app, but they're not allowed to open this document on that app because it's sensitive. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on require multi-factor authentication. Now, Remember when we set up the conditions and I said exclude trusted locations. So this won't interfere with that. Now, the other thing that you can also control is the session uh, policy. Uh, and you can basically say, do you want, and this depends on the app that you're using, by the way. This is great. So conditional access app control. And I could say, I want them to get access to, let's say, a team site or a, a Microsoft Office document, but they're not allowed to download it. OK, so they can view it on screen, but they're not allowed to save copies of it. And you can also customize uh, that as well. Now, as you can see, if you need any help with anything, any of the blue links will take you directly to a support page at docs.microsoft.com. Now, the other thing that we've got here is the sign-in frequency. So here is where you can specify that the user must re-sign in X, you know, whatever. So if I said every 30 days, I want the user to, to be able to stay signed in. So in other words, it caches the user's browser or the user's cookie, their token, for 30 days. Um, and then the user needs to re-log in again. Again, it's a convenience thing. The other thing that's quite nice as well um, is something called a persistent browser session. Um, and you can make it always persistent or never persistent. Um, this is great in a bank because if you choose never persistent, when the user closes the browser, they would need to re-log in again, again for security reasons, so that you can't use somebody else's uh, session tokens. All right. Um, okay, so once you have got your conditional access, um, you want to switch it on. All right, so yes, I want to go ahead and create my policy. You can choose for report only. And again, I'm going to click on create. Now, one of the cool things that we have here now is we've got this what if tool. 
So I can go into the what if tool and I can say what if, what if this user is using this app from this IP address with this device platform and um, what would happen? Yeah, that is really nice by the way. Okay, um, other things that we've got here, um, you can also have a look at this, a number of reports that you can view. So insights and reporting uh, will give you a nice um, conditional access report. So again, uh, you can uh, follow this um, and there's some scripting that you can do here, which allows you to pull out a really nice um, generic or detailed report rather, I should say. Okay, so there we go. Just a couple of things, a few new features, which are really exciting in conditional access. So there you have it, Azure AD conditional access isn't that cool. There's some really nice features there that I think will make a huge difference uh, to your business. So I hope you enjoyed the session. As always, if you did, please go ahead, put your comments in down below and uh, any questions that you have, I would love to hear from them. Okay, now if you've not subscribed, go ahead, click on that subscribe button up there, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And as always, give me a big thumbs up uh, if you uh, enjoyed the video. So, until next time, you stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks for dropping by, hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button and ring that bell and you won't miss a thing. See you next time.